All right, thank you. Here to talk more about the supply chain problems across the country and, frankly, around the globe, Brandon Daniels. He's the president of risk management and compliance firm Exeter. Brandon, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Now, we keep hearing and talking about these supply chain shortages and bottlenecks. I mean, I, th I think at this point, I'm having nightmares about supply chain issues because Everywhere we are talking about it every day in every aspect, it seems. So what exactly is happening here? Can you explain to our viewers and maybe give them a visual? Absolutely. Alex and Dave, thank you for having me on this morning. So, so what's happening is that there are a series of um, risks that can impact the supply chain, and they are all coming to fruition at this moment in time. Now, I, I don't want to make that sound like it's a sort of doomsday prophecy, but it is a, a compound set of constraints. There are geopolitical tensions that are uh, forcing um, uh, coal prices to go higher and, and coal imports into China to be lesser than they would usually, creating mass power outages in China where a lot of goods come from. Um, there are also climate issues. We've had more billion dollar disasters this year at this point in time than any year that we've seen in the last 10 years. So we're seeing an incredible amount of climate change impact. And then also in the pandemic, there was an incredible amount of buying, more buying than we usually see. Everybody was sitting at home uh, and usually they'd spend money on services. They were now spending it all on goods. And so that created an, a lot of buying that wasn't anticipated by the market. And then lastly, there are bottlenecks in our supply chain that people didn't see. So supply chain risk managers have always been focused on price and performance, not how well you can weather this kind of storm. And so they have not gotten visibility into not only who supplies them, but who supplies their suppliers and made sure that they didn't have bottlenecks in jurisdictions and regions. I mean, a lot of products are manufactured in Italy as well. And when Italy was hard hit by the pandemic, they had to shut down factories that affected things like medical devices. Um, and so what we're seeing right now is this confluence of factors all hitting us at once and creating a reverberating effect like, a, like an epicenter of issues with the pandemic creating a reverberating effect at exacerbating existing fault lines in the supply chain. So it is literally the perfect storm. Can we expect things to get better or worse? So things will get worse before they get better. Um, we will start, I mean, President Biden said it, and, and I believe it, and I've seen it in our modeling. Um, the ports and the major retailers starting to ramp up, people having to engage this labor shortage and raise wages, those things are going to lessen the impact. And people won't live forever, you know, not being able to deliver product. Eventually people want to meet market demand, um, as you had in the, the segment that was playing just before. People want to make, meet market demand. That's a supply opportunity, even if it's at a slightly higher price. So what I think is, these sort of logistical issues will start to work themselves out of the system and the supply chain issue will lessen. But there's a foundation of supply chain issues that we're going to have to resolve into the future, like U.S. and ally uh, manufacturing and uh, natural resourcing um, for many of our large scale products. And then things like better weather mapping, better supply chain mapping for each of the big companies that deliver goods to us, better supply chain mapping and risk mitigation that's going to take a few years. And we we got to solve this employment crisis too. Right. We don't have yeah. a shortage of truck drivers right. around the globe. Yeah, exactly. So when we're taking a look at the bigger picture, Brandon, what do you think, how will this lingering supply chain issue, how is that going to affect the overall economic recovery? So Alex, that's a, that's a great question. Th there are two things. One, the companies are going to have to reach deeper into the labor pool to pull people out. That is going to create wages, that's, or wa wage increases, which start to you know, help us meet this sort of stagnation versus the CPI over the last several years, right? Um, they're going to have to innovate. Uh, innovate on how they can manufacture products 
you know, here in the United States or in, in Latin America or in Canada, in, in local jurisdictions or diversify their supply chain, which is actually going to have an anti-monopolistic effect on the market, creating new opportunities for any innovative companies that can create new ways to create specialized products for us. So I think it'll have a positive effect net net on the recovery. What it will have in the short term is a struggle, mm -hmm. right? It, this, this impact of inflation is going to hit the pocketbook of everyone coming home at the day and trying to put dinner on the table. And so it's going to have an immediate impact on us um, in the holidays and both in our day-to-day -day lives that you know, we're going to need the federal government to take a leading hand in, like uh, you know, President Biden said yesterday. Brian and Daniels, great stuff. He's the yeah. president of risk management firm Exeter. Appreciate you being with us this morning, my friend. Thank you.